Hello everyone. The 40 Guard Content Security Suite offers advanced security technologies optimized to monitor and protect against file-based attack tactics, malware, and ransomware. Here I have the 40 Guard Portfolio Brief, and it has content security comprised of each of these services. This presentation will focus on the first four services listed. I have the link to the portfolio brief below in the description of this video. Fortinet intentionally makes the ordering process simple. The entire 40 Guard Content Security Suite is included in the Advanced Threat Protection, or ATP, bundle for the FortiGate. Now let's jump right into the antivirus demo. Here I have my Windows test host with the Microsoft Edge browser, and it's behind my FortiGate running the latest FortiOS 7.4. I'm going to use the well-known iCar virus files. Here is the first file and you can see the block message from the FortiGate. It identified the virus correctly and provided a reference URL where you can find more information on that specific virus. The second file is the same file as the first, but with the extension changed. The third file is a zipped file of the second file. And the last file is a zipped file of the third. So it's compressed twice, essentially. Each time, the FortiGate blocked the virus and identified it accurately. Let's take a look at the configuration. This is the FortiGate GUI. And I created an antivirus security profile called AB1SB which stands for Antivirus Policy 1 Sandbox. I initially had sandboxing as part of this video, but it'll now be covered in a separate video. In this profile, I'm inspecting all the available protocols. For my outbound firewall policy, I have the AV1SB profile applied along with SSL deep inspection. In the logs, we can confirm the ICAR test file was blocked. The log states what antivirus profile and firewall policy was used. The next service of content security that I'll be showing is content disarm and reconstruction. Here I have a PDF file that has a clock timer built on it through JavaScript, and it does indeed work. I'm accessing it directly from my workstation that's outside of my testing environment. You can see the clocks and timers change when I click on the various settings. Now I'm on the same Windows test host that is behind my FortiGate with the same Edge browser. When I click on the clock timer file here to download and open it, you can see that the file has been altered. A cover sheet has been added and it says, the file has been cleaned of potential threats. When I scroll down, I can see the contents of the file are still there but now the clock and timers are no longer functional. The file was sanitized of all of its active content to disarm it without affecting the integrity of its textual contents. It allows network administrators to protect their users from malicious document files. Let's take a look at the configuration. On the same FortiGate as the previous example, my firewall policy is showing a different antivirus profile. I created a new antivirus profile named AV2-CDR. And you can see further down, I have the content disarm and reconstruction option selected. I want to point out that CDR requires the antivirus profile to be in proxy mode, as well as other feature options denoted with a red circle and the letter P. Before I move on, I want to bring to attention the virus outbreak prevention. I'll be speaking on that shortly. Now we're going to take a look at the logs. Under Log and Report, then Security Events, you can access the antivirus logs quickly. After scrolling down, you can see the file javascriptclock.pdf, and the action states content disarmed.
Next, I'm going to show the Virus Outbreak Protection Service, or VOS. Here I have a file, and when I try to download it, the block message states that it was identified by the VOS. VOS uses real-time access to Fortinet's Global Threat Intelligence Database to provide the latest in malware protection. The intention is to have it as an added layer of protection against threats that may emerge between antivirus updates. In the logs, you can see that I have the same antivirus and firewall policy as I did previously. The event accurately shows outbreak prevention. Next up is data leak prevention, or DLP. Here I have a spreadsheet with fictional people and their credit card number. I'm going to copy that information and then paste it into a website called DLP Test. This will test if I'm able to send credit card information out to the internet via an HTTPS post. And as you can see, that the FortiGate detected the sensitive information and blocked it with the correct message. Let's take a look at the logs and configuration. I can access the DLP logs easily and quickly in security events. You can see that I even tried uploading the spreadsheet onto the DLP test website and it was successfully blocked. To configure the DLP security profile, three things need to be created. First is the dictionary. Here's where you determine what is the sensitive information. In this example, it was the credit cards, as we just saw. Next is the sensor, and I have attached the credit card dictionary. Then lastly are the rules. This is where you determine what protocols to apply DLP to, and if you want to scan messages or actual files. An example of messages is when I pasted the credit card information into the DLP test website. And then of course, I applied the DLP profile to my outbound firewall policy, along with SSL deep inspection. And that concludes this presentation. I hope you found it informative and thank you for watching.